So let's get started talking about Bollinger Bands. Now in tonight's class, I'm gonna use the term security when I'm referring to any tradable instrument. I might say the Euro, I might say the dollar, I might say Facebook, I might say Bitcoin, or I might just say security or asset, but I'm really talking about all tradable financial instruments in which an open market exists. Similarly, I intermix the terms investing and trading. We know the difference. Investing is a much longer term position, while traders take a much shorter term position. And we at ETX are traders. Now, whenever I'm giving a seminar, a webinar, a live presentation, whether I'm meeting traders one-on-one -on -one or talking to them on the phone, you know what the first thing is most people ask me is, should I buy today? Should I sell today? What will prices be later today, tomorrow, next week? Well, wouldn't investing be easy if we knew the answers to these seemingly simple questions? Now, if you're attending this class night in the hopes that I have a crystal ball and I can tell you the answer to these questions, I'm afraid I can't. But if you're attending this webinar with the hopes that technical analysis and using Bollinger Bands will improve your investing and trading, that it surely will. Now, Bollinger Bands were created by a legendary money manager and researcher, John Bollinger. Hence, they're called Bollinger Bands. Now, the one nice thing about Bollinger Bands is John Bollinger is still live and active in the marketplace. And if you really want to learn about Bollinger Bands, if you just go to www.bollingerbands.com, you can get all of the information straight from the horse's mouth. Now, much of the information, there's tons of information all over the internet about Bollinger Bands, but most of it's discretionary. It's all types of gurus and trade analysts trying to tell you how to use Bollinger Bands, how they've created a strategy, how they've done something to use Bollinger Bands. And the information usually pushes it back to you as a trader to interpret what the securities price is doing relevant to its bands. So it's better for you to understand exactly how to read the bands and then apply it to your own trading. Now, Bollinger Bands are based on or what they're called envelopes or bands. And they are based on or one of the few indicators is actually put directly onto the charts under price action. So let me pop up a live chart here and we're gonna see how we do this. So we're looking at my teaching chart. So this is the Euro US dollar, 30 minute chart. And right now I have a moving average line on my chart, the gold line. This is a 20 period moving average. And it is the basis of Bollinger Bands. So Bollinger Band starts with a 20 period moving average, and then it puts a line or a band above and below the moving average in something that's called a standard deviation, which is a very complex mathematical calculation. It wasn't developed for trading in the financial markets. It's a statistical calculation that's used in all types of mathematical strategies and formulas. And we're gonna learn what standard deviation is because you have to have some understanding. You don't have to know how to calculate it, but you have to have some brief understanding so that you can properly use it in your trading. So you're not just trading blindly. So as I said, we start out with the 20 period moving average. Then we drop on there what we call the upper and the lower bands and they are calculated, like I said, at a standard deviation of two. So this is a two times standard deviation plus and a minus two times standard deviation. So in other words, the lower band is equal distance away from the moving average and downward as it is upward. And then we put a background in so we can shade in so we can have a much more visible site. And that's how we put Bollinger Bands on our charts. That's it. Pretty easy. In fact, all you do is click on the Bollinger Band indicator and it drops it on. You know, you can colorize it like I did or you can use it in black and white or red and blue, okay? Or whatever colors your chart puts it on because colors are unimportant. And in Bollinger Bands, the shape of the band, sometimes it makes a snake, sometimes it looks like an alien creature, sometimes it looks like a dragon. That is unimportant 
Now, the width of the bands tell you how volatile or contrite the market is. The, mar the more the market is moving sideways or constricting, the tighter the bands become. When the markets are volatile, the bands widen. But what we're looking at is the relationship in Bollinger Bands between price action. Hold on a second, I just gotta get my marker up here, right? Between price action and the band, the upper line or the lower line. Now, what you see here, this is called riding the bands. When price is falling, it should be right on the bands. When price is rising, it should be doing the same. And we're looking for that relationship between price and the band and the moving average. So we can see here as price was falling, it was staying right on the bands and then it got rejected by the band. It could not make that band again. And it continued by being rejected, but now it hasn't, it doesn't mean the trend is over, but it means it's in trouble because we don't look at it until it's actually broken the moving average for it to actually swing in the other direction. But what Bollinger Bands does tell us is when price is at a high and when price is at a low. So let's go over and let's learn how to interpret these and let's learn what standard deviation is. Now, Bollinger Bands can be applied in all financial markets, including equities, forex, commodities, and futures. Bollinger Bands can be used in most time frames from very short periods to hourly, daily, weekly, and monthly. Now, there are very few indicators, number one, that are actually put on the chart over price, because as you know, most indicators go below. And there's very few indicators that adjust quickly enough to use in short-term time frames. And Bollinger Bands works fine on a five minute chart, a 10 minute chart, a 30 minute chart. Now Bollinger Bands answers a question. Are prices high or low on a relative basis? By definition, price is high at the upper band and price is low at the lower band. That bit of information is incredibly valuable. It's even more powerful if combined with other tools such as other indicators for confirmation. Bollinger Bands are a technical analysis tool. Specifically, they are a type of trading band or envelope. Now, as I said, Bollinger Bands uses a calculation of minus two and plus two standard deviations. Now, in the real world, no statistician would ever calculate standard deviation by hand. It's very, very complex and very slow. But standard deviation, and I'm gonna to try to put this in terms that we can understand or that you can understand because I'm not a mathematician either. But standard deviation is a measure of the dispersion of a set of data from its mean. So standard deviation is a measure of the dispersal or the distance or how price is pushed out from its set of data, which in this case is from its mean. A mean is the moving average. So it means is how is price dispersed over that moving average? It is calculated as the square root of the variance by determining the variation between each data point. So if we're using the close on our moving average, it's each data point relative to that average. If the data points are further from the mean, there is a higher deviation within the data set. Now, in its simplest form, the mean is simply the moving average of all the data points in a given set. In investing, for example, you might wanna know the mean closing price or the average closing price for the last 20 days or 20 periods. What is that? It's a 20 period moving average. And now this can be obtained by adding the closing prices for each session, dividing by 20. Now, because the markets are fickle at best, traders and analysts use moving averages to adjust. 
This means the calculation is always taking into account the most recent sessions movement and older sessions drop off. But then we have to calculate the standard deviation from that moving average. So the standard deviation is calculated based on the average the distance of each data point from the average is squared, summed, and averaged to find the variance. Or put another way, variance is derived by taking the mean of the data points, subtracting the mean of each data point individually, squaring each of these results, and then taking another mean into these squares. Or standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. So for Bollinger Bands, we have the base middle band, which is a 20 period moving average. We have the upper band, which is the standard deviation and the default is times two. And the lower band is the exact opposite, which is a lower band is minus two standard deviation. And that translates into the envelope or the band that we get around price. Now Bollinger bands can be used for three different pieces of interpretation. They give us pattern recognition, and we call these in Bollinger Bands that we have the M and the W. It gives us reversal signals, and it gives us trend analysis. It can detect when continuation or conclusion of a trend. So the most popular, or the easiest to understand, which isn't really the most popular because very few people use it, and I've, I've never used it, but that is the formation of the W or the M. And that's because they take a lot of time frame to form and may not ever finish the formation. It's like looking for a head and shoulders. You have, in a downtrend, you have the one leg that's formed first, but you wouldn't even notice that it's forming the pattern, bounces up and makes a, a high within there, comes back down and makes a second bottom, which is pretty equal to the first bottom, and then bounces up. Once it breaks that moving average on the fourth leg, you can say you've actually got a solid W. But then we have the upside down or the M, which happens when it's coming off of an uptrend. Now we highly recommend combining Bollinger Bands with the RSI indicator, it's a perfect match. There, and there are two types that you should, of tops that we should be aware of, okay. And as you can see here, price is moving up and pushing up the band. It's above the moving average. See where the white X is across the moving average, moved into a solid uptrend, rode the bands up, got rejected back down, but was not able to break the moving average and continued then riding back up the bands. Finally, here as its price peaked, price moved up to the bands, but got rejected, fell back down, tried again to reach that other band and was rejected again. We still don't know that that trend is in trouble yet or over until we get here and it breaks the moving average. That tells us that uptrend is over and we can see that we moved into a downtrend. Now, while Bollinger Bands are exceptionally helpful in determining when an asset is overshot to the upside or downside, it's important to use the bands to also set risks, not just entry points. Because the wider the bands, the more volatile the market is, so the more you should be setting your stop loss or your risk at a higher level because the market swings are gonna be higher. So there are some few things you need to pay attention to when looking at Bollinger Bands. During strong trend, price should stay close to the outer band. If price pulls away, an outer band can be upper or lower coming off of a downtrend or an uptrend. If the price pulls away from the outer band as the trend continues, it shows fading momentum. Repeated pushes in the outer band that don't actually reach the band show a lack of power. A break of the moving average is often the signal that the trend is ending. So here we can tell an entire story of the history of, move, of the movement of the asset looking at the bands. But remember, we can only trade at the wall going forward. But the only way you're gonna to learn to trust your bands is to interpret them over and over so you can see exactly what the bands are trying to tell you because as it's developing at the wall, you have to be able to react. So only practice will make you perfect on these. 
And the only way you can practice is going back and seeing how it happened in the past, seeing what developed, seeing what you saw, so you can understand when a top is being rejected. Okay, well, you can understand when it's riding the bench. You can understand when it's moving sideways and the trend is in trouble. So successful day trading is mostly a game of pennies. The best firms and individual traders who look to trade, look to scout for small amounts. Using Bollinger Bands show that an interday edge does exist. There is a preciseness here using Bollinger Bands. Use the preciseness to your advantage. Now, as you can see, the Bollinger Bands are a multifaceted trading indicator that can provide you with lots of information about trends, buyers and seller balances, and about potential trend shifts. Together with the moving average and RSI, Bollinger Bands make for a great foundation for any trading strategy. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you for being part of the ETX family, and we'll see you on Thursday. Have a great trading week. Good night now.